I'm going to show you three ways that you can make stencils in Blender, which you're going to be able to place on your models like this one right here. I'm talking about text. I'm talking about decals, logos, icons, whatever. So by the end of this tutorial, you're going to be able to customize any 3D model with whatever textures you want. Now, if you want to see more tutorials where I break down every single step of really complicated projects like car interiors and stuff like that, where I use all the tools that I teach on this channel, or if you just want to download some of the models that you see on my channel, then check out my Patreon page. It's in the description. All right, step one, you're going to have to quickly set up an image editing program. Now, I like to use paint because it's free and it's really easy to use, but you can use Photoshop or probably something similar. So I recommend to just go to Google, type in paint.net. I would love to provide you with the link, but I'm definitely going to forget. And just click the first download link right here. Make sure you don't type in paint.net, just type in paint space net. Now, when you get to the website, just click on this download now button right here and you can download it using this link. Then you have to do whatever you have to do to install this program. That stuff is pretty straightforward. I don't have to teach you this. Now, the first way to make stencils is to use PaintNet and draw them yourself. Now, this way is great because it's flexible. You can make anything that you want. You can make any kind of text image, logo, design, whatever you want. The downside is you're going to have to learn how to use some of the basic tools inside of paint. Now I'm going to show you some of the most basic stuff, but if you want to see more about how to use paint to create some logos, then let me know in the comments and we can make another tutorial for that. So when you open up paint, you're just going to have a blank white canvas, but if you're making stencils, you're going to have to have a transparent background. So to get a transparent background, you have to select everything with control a and then press delete. And now you just have a transparent image. Then you can go over here to the toolbar. And if you don't have the toolbar, you can activate it up here in the top right corner along with some other stuff you have to select your text tool and pick a color i usually like to choose white because most products have white text and then you can control the font size and you can also pick the font now you can just click anywhere on the screen and start typing whatever you want now if you want to make a logo you can take some of the shape tools over here set it to like a circle you can also change the color to something else down here and you can make your own custom logos like this again if you want to have some more instructions on this then let me know in the comments and we're going to talk about how to make some more sophisticated logos inside of paint.net so once your stencil is ready just go up here to file save as and save the image somewhere to your computer now it's very important that your image is saved as a PNG because that means that your image has transparency and we have to have a transparent background so we have to have a PNG the second way to get stencils is to find them on the internet and this is very useful if you're trying to take a logo which already exists or if you need something really specific which you can't really create yourself for example I typed in BMW logo and I added PNG because I wanted to have a transparent background. Now, if I go to images, I'm going to get a whole bunch of different pictures of the BMW logo and I can just click on one of them and open it up. And this is going to be an image of a BMW logo with a transparent background. Now, sometimes you can't really tell if it has a transparent background. So I like to check by right clicking, copy image. I go back to paint. And then I paste it into paint to see if it has a transparent background. Now you want to create a new canvas with control M and that's going to create a canvas, which has the same dimensions as the image, which is copied to your clipboard. So in this case, 600 by 600 allows me to perfectly paste and fit this BMW logo into this image. And as you can see, indeed, we have a transparent background and now you can just go ahead and save this the same way you saved the previous stencil. Now, the third way that you can make stencils is you can model them inside of Blender, put some materials on them inside of Blender, and then you can render that with a transparent background. For example, I'm going to create this simple example right here. And again, if you want me to go more in depth on how you can create this in more detail inside of Blender, let me know in the comments. And once you create a logo in Blender, here's how you can turn it into an image with a transparent background. You have to press seven to go to top view and then press control alt zero to align your camera with your view. If you don't have a camera in the scene, just press shift a and add a new camera into the scene. Then you're going to select the camera, go to camera properties, change the type into orthographic, and you might have to adjust the scale. So your image fits perfectly into the frame. Now go to output properties. And usually you're going to want to use a square image for this. So I'm just going to use a resolution of 1024 by 1024. Now go to render properties, find the film option and make sure to check transparent. This is going to enable rendering with a transparent background. You might also have to adjust the lighting in your scene. So select your light source, go to light properties and just increase the power if you have to. I'm just going to type in something like 5000 and I'll put the light directly over the scene here. And now if I press F12, it's going to turn my scene into a beautiful image with a transparent background. If you want to save this, you have to go to image, save as, make sure to set the file format to PNG again, because we have to have a transparency in the background, set the type to RGBA and just give the picture a name. 
Now the final step is to texture paint this onto a model inside of Blender. So to do that, you have to first UV unwrap your model. Now I'm just gonna use a default cube as an example because it's already UV unwrapped by default. If you don't know how to UV unwrap stuff, then check out my tutorial for how to UV unwrap stuff. Then go to your shading tab, add a new material to the object, and you have to create a new image which we're going to use to texture paint. So to do that, add an image texture node, click on new because we want to generate a new image, and we're gonna name this image texture painting. Set whatever resolution you want for this image, and you can also change the color if you want to. Then click OK, and now we can view this image in the image editor on the side right here. We can apply this image to the object by just plugging it into the principal node, and as you can see, this image is now applied to the material and to the cube. Next, we have to use one of the stencils that we saved to paint over this material. So to do that, switch to your texture painting window. And as you can see, by default, you can just use your brush to add some random white patterns onto your object. You can also do this in 3D view. Now, we don't want to use a default white brush. Instead, we want to use our stencil. So to do that, let's go to texture properties down here. We're going to click on new and open up one of the images that we saved. Now, press N to open up this menu on the side inside the texture painting window. Scroll down to the texture menu and select the image which you loaded. In my case, it's a 3D cursor. If you try painting over the surface now, you're gonna see that we just get a tile pattern consisting of the image that we just created. We don't want to do this. Instead, we want to use a stencil so we can control exactly where we're gonna place this. And to do that, set the mapping to stencil. And now you're going to see the image appear in your 3D view. You can also see it appear inside the 2D view in the texture painting workspace. And now there are some basic controls that you can use to adjust this image. For example, if you right click on this, you can move the image around. If you hold shift and then you click and drag the right click, you're gonna scale the image up and down so you can make your stencil bigger or smaller. If you hold control and then you right click and drag, you're gonna rotate the stencil. Now we can just go to top view or any other side view and we can just click and drag to paint over the image. And as you can see, this now stays on the object and it also stays inside the texture. If you want to save this to export it, you can press image, save as, and you can save this texture painted image onto your computer. Now, sometimes when you load a stencil into Blender, you're gonna notice it's a little bit stretched out in a weird way. You can fix this by just pressing the image aspect button down here. And you can now texture paint anything on any model ever. Let me know in the comments if these techniques are gonna be useful to you. And also, of course, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and let me know what you wanna see next.